Thanks for joining me, boys. I'm joined by Bryce Kindop, uh, Zane Franklin, Chase Waters, all captains in the dub of their respective teams. So thanks for hopping on tonight, fellas. No, thanks for having me. Now, my first question is going to be years down the road when you're all married and have kids and you've got grandkids and they're asking you about this strange time. What, are, what is going to be the one thing you tell them that you've noticed about COVID-19? Mm. And somebody can hop in or I can pick somebody if you like. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I think something that we've been kind of spending a lot of family time together playing, you know, play, whether it's playing board games or going outside. So that's kind of good. And we've, I don't know, right now we're working on a paint in the garage. So there's lots of housework kind of to get done. But it's, it's a weird time for sure. Uh, I think everybody's doing a little bit of painting. Like yeah. paint store has got to be out of paint by now. <laughs> how about how will you, Zaner? Well, uh, this is the first time I've been home uh, in the last five years for calving. So, uh, you know, I've been actually put to work a lot, the last, you know, couple of weeks. So I haven't been, you know, as bored as these two guys probably. But, um, you know, I'm learning a lot of stuff that I missed out on for sure. And Kinder? Yeah, uh, I think you notice how much you, you miss your friends and just miss doing normal stuff. It's just weird being stuck inside kind of and having to follow all these new rules now. So I think you just miss your friends and you just kind of realize that kind of stuff a little bit more. Um, yeah, you start growing a mustache. <laughs> yeah, and you start doing weird stuff because you're bored. <laughs> what's, the, what's the weirdest thing you guys got going on right now? Uh, my uh -huh. mustache is... Probably it for now. Yeah, I don't. I had a little goatee going for a little bit, but it's gone. <laughs> it's gone now. It was. It was pretty bad. But uh, I told. I told everybody and myself I'm not shaving or getting a haircut till till we're allowed to leave. So I might be. We'll have to check it in a month and see what it's like. <laughs> I've been doing uh, um, beach body with the wife. That's. Okay. I feel pretty. Um, uncoordinated doing that stuff i'm not gonna lie fellas what, what it kind of what is that it's like arms Be are you talking about a workout right yeah now? beach body you've never seen the beach body Bro. videos no where what a person that? yells at you from the tv and you do like air squats and i don't know yesterday night oh. was uh it was based off martial arts so a lot of punching <laughs> and a lot of kicking oh. Oh. That's something I could do, I think. <laughs> you should start one of those, Frankie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Frankie's vids. That's if we have any summer yeah. ever. There might not be no summer. Well, it's starting to feel half decent nice now, fellas. Yeah, yeah it was nice out today. It's finally nice today, yeah. Speaking of which, I was thinking here, you guys since, I don't know, you guys can tell me the age, whether it was 14, 12, 16, are pretty much on the ice out of 365 days. I assume 300, maybe more than that. With no ability to be on the ice right now, what are you guys doing to keep yourselves? I don't know. What, what are you guys doing to work out? I, obviously, you're not doing beach body. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit. Uh, I have a little space back here in the basement where I got a little bench and a bar. Try and do that kind of things. I have a treadmill. I've ran around Bud Miller a couple times. And I know I've been talking to Chase. He's been rollerblading, so I have a couple. I have a pair of my own, so I'll probably start doing that pretty pretty soon here. Yeah, we got a little. We got a little setup in our garage too. My dad's kind of ordered a few things when we kind of realized we'd be stuck inside for a while. So we got a little bit of gym equipment, and then yeah, like Bryce said, I've been putting on some hours on the rollerblades, but it's fun. And I uh, I only have a punching bag and a bench press. So oh, I'm just working on the essentials right now. <laughs> chest, and, chest and fighting skills is all I'm working on. <laughs> well, the, the sidewalks will be clear now, fellas. Uh, so the roller blades will be solid because I've been out with the kids about four times a day, it seems like, to try and keep their energy down. Uh, and at least everything's clear now. So at least you can get outside and do some running up until this week. Yeah. That wasn't the case. You dang near kill yourself sometimes running around on our streets. Yeah, pretty icy. Pretty brutal. Well, 
I'm curious your guys' thoughts. You guys were all in the middle of a season or coming towards the end of a season, playoffs on the horizon. What uh, – who out of you three was going the deepest in the playoffs? We were. Ever was. No, no. No. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I'm a different division than these guys, so that's right. That's right. Maybe I would have met one of them in the final. So I think we were just rolling. Out. We were just rolling in the playoffs, and then and then it all happened. Well, no, I I have such a different opinion than both of <laughs> you. Um, um, Chase's team is yeah. They went up, got to the finals, and <laughs> and and Bryce's team would have lost to Portland. Why? And we would have played Portland that, in the conference finals, and then we would, have, you know, had a good series with them. But we would, have, we, you know, that means that we would have made the first of last series. We lost to Portland. Well, yeah, you would have lost to Portland for Why, sure. Why though? I just they were the really best all year. Game. But that, yeah, it's, <laughs> that's not what I'm saying. We beat you too, so who knows? Yeah, once out of four times. We should have beat you guys this year, Frankie. No, that we kind of worked, you guys. <laughs> we uh, we we lost to um, Moose Jaw and Regina before we yeah. played you guys, so we couldn't we couldn't lose to you guys too. <laughs> Boys, how hard was it to have it end the way it did? Yeah, I thought it was it was brutal because you just have that thought in the back of your head now. And obviously, mine and Zayner's last kick at the can there, and we both had pretty good teams. So um, you kind of yeah. just sit back and look at all the memories there, and it's just tough to go out that way, not knowing how how the year could have ended and and stuff like that. So it wasn't very easy for sure. Yeah, it definitely sucks, you know, losing out in a championship, you know, because I thought that's how that would have went <laughs> if we would have got to finish the season. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's tough, but. You know, we're all in the same boat, kind of. So, it's it's you know, it sucks, but it is what it is. Yeah, I think I'm just, I'm kind of lucky. I got another year. I can imagine being you two guys. But <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's it was pretty crazy. We woke up one day and we were actually on a road trip in Brandon. So we were in or Brandon, Winnipeg. So we were in Winnipeg when we we practiced the morning and then got the news later that night that we had to go home and then went home the next morning. So it seemed like it all happened so quick and you know, it was really crazy and tough. To, tough the way it all ended but yeah well when it kind of was like you know when they had first postponed it or whatever um we had just went through like tri-city and and spokane and that's like you know the whole state of washington was like super bad i guess at the time so we were kind of like you know crossing our fingers hoping we didn't pick anything up yeah i thought i was gonna get stuck in washington at that point when everything started to go downhill I thought the borders were going to get shut down or something, but I was lucky enough to come back. Well, I was curious, um, like, Chase, obviously you being Saskatoon, you're the closest to Lloyd. I mean, you don't have really anything to worry about. They weren't shutting down the highway in between uh, the two yeah. cities by any stretch of the imagination. But, you know, coming from over in B.C., uh, Xander, you like B.C. had the earliest outbreak in Canada. What was it uh, – was there any – stress at all once uh, things started to, to close down from that side of the world or not really well uh the only stress i really had was if my truck was gonna get me home because the engine light was <laughs> turned on it turned on the day before i was supposed to leave and you know halfway uh halfway home i uh i broke down so i had to <laughs> pull into uh, like one of the small towns i forget where it was um you know Belmont or somewhere like that and luckily, I they got me back on the road. But it's it worked, you know, for everything. Like considering everything, there was like no service like an hour on each side of you know Valmont, and I was just leaving, passing through, and my engine just like I lost all power. So I had to like putter back to you know Valmont. Thankfully, got fixed. But that was the only stress I had. I wasn't worried about roads or whatever getting shut down. How are you, Bryce? I mean, you're you're in a different country at the time. Um, and like you say, like, I mean, Washington was the earliest outbreak pretty much of it. Was yeah. What was the stress level like on your guys' side? Yeah, I think it was definitely taken a little bit more serious there. I mean, for us, we still didn't know at the time. Obviously, we knew it was pretty serious with 
the league getting postponed. And then you start seeing it all over the news. And next thing you know, our year, our Euros are flying home the next day. And then it's kind of just going into a little bit of a craze. And lucky, luckily enough, we got to go home the next day. So I think it was taken a little bit more serious there. And we were, we were all lucky, lucky to get home. It's pretty crazy how quickly things shut down, eh? Like, I mean, speaking from a senior hockey standpoint, senior hockey got closed down. Like, yeah. out in the middle of Boontown, Saskatchewan, we weren't allowed to have anything going on. I can just imagine, like, you said you're probably heading to practice or, or what have you. Like, where were you guys when all this went down? So we, we actually just got off the ice. So we got off the ice, went back to the hotel for lunch, and then found out we were going to have a meeting later that night to see what was going on. But we kind of heard heard stuff that stuff was going to get canceled just from other guys around the league. But so we all kind of knew what was going to happen. It was just kind of a, a waiting game. But yeah, like I said, then we had to bus home 10 hours the next day to get home and then drive home the next day. So, yeah. Yeah, I don't really, you know, remember the exact or, you know, where I was. Um, but no, I remember just at the time, because they kind of postponed it on a Thursday and didn't cancel until, you know, Sunday. So we kind of just had the whole weekend, the whole weekend off. So we, you know, I don't think we really, like, got <laughs> together as a big group, but we definitely, uh, <laughs> you know, hung, hung out a little bit. And uh, so I don't remember the exact moment they, we found out. It's safe to say you weren't too stressed about it when it first came out then. <laughs> yeah, well, no, no, I mean. I, I I didn't ever hear about anybody getting like had it in camels yet, so whatever. No, well, I I think you're. It was, my, it, was, it was my last. It was my last, <laughs> you know, year. So if they're gonna cancel, I'm gonna have some fun <laughs> when I go home. Before I go home. <laughs> How are you, Bryce? Uh yeah, same kind of thing as Chase. I was. We just had morning practice. Uh, we were gonna go on a road trip to Tri City that day. And then that got pushed back until we found out what was happening. And then we had a meeting that same day and figured out we were all, we were all going to go home. So it, it did happen really quick. Now, looking back at your guys' – I mean, Chase, you still got a season coming up. But looking over this past season, is there any moments that stick out to your guys' memory as uh, special or a crazy moment, uh, what have you, whether we're talking in-game, fans – uh, volunteering, just in general, anything that really sticks out from the season, um, you know, looking back on it? Uh, I think for me, I think, you know, you don't, it's weird because, you know, if you would have known this was going to happen, you would, you know, pay more attention to little moments, you know, the little details that you miss. Um, but I think just for me and, you know, I think our team, we had so much fun every day, you know, come to the rink. Um, I think that kind of sticks out for me the most. Like, I think compared to, you know, the last three years, or three years before that, like, just, you know, this was just a whole nother level of fun. And, then, and obviously it helps when you're winning, you know, winning a majority of the hockey games. But, you know, the guys are awesome. The coaches are awesome. So I think just, you know, everyday life was just really fun for me this year. Yeah, I think I'm kind of similar to Zane there. We had a, we had a really good group, good group of guys this year. And we're fortunate enough we have a lot of guys coming back next year. And, Obviously, to the to the guys that don't come back, I mean, they it was kind of their last time, just like Frankie and Frankie and Kenny there. But yeah, kind of just what Zane said, we always had we always had a good time coming to the rink, and I especially remember our last road trip. We were we were fighting for positioning in our standings, and we were playing Winnipeg and Brandon. Those were those were going to be two of the biggest games of the year, and we were all kind of super excited going on the bus trip down there, and it was it was lots of fun. Then all of a sudden, it you know kind of ended. So that's kind of probably a moment that. That stands out to me. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, those those two pretty much said it all. Um, obviously, there there was a bunch of banners. One when I was in Everett and stuff like that. A lot of team, good team success going on. But I think I'm just gonna miss going to going to the rink with all the boys and doing some fun stuff with the boys. I think it's stuff like that you're gonna miss the most about junior hockey. Now. With the NHL entry draft coming up very, very shortly, if it does happen, that is, fellas. I, I don't know if it's going to ha- – I don't know what the timeline for that's going to be, assuming that it goes off in June. Who's the kid from the dub that everybody's going to be talking about? Mm, 
Mm. I think everybody kind of oh. – well, I, like Chase would have different guys than I would, but because we play yeah. each other – or play different teams a lot. But definitely, you know, I was lucky enough to play with one of the kids that, you know, they'll talk about a lot is Zari. Um, you know, playing on his line made it pretty easy to, you know, have success. And then the one kid from um, Portland, that Jarvis. Jarvis, he, yeah. Know, was yeah, he was pretty good. Yeah, he's lights out too. Yeah, uh, kind of from our division there, we got all in PA. They got a wise, the wise black kid and Gooley kid. They're both pretty, pretty yeah, highly ranked kids. And then, yeah, and then we had a uh, we actually had a guy that had a really like a kind of a breakout second half. And Tristan Robbins. I don't know if you guys remember him at all, but he finished the year with around eighty points, and he he should he should go anywhere in the first first couple of rounds. I I think, but yeah, it'll be. It'll be cool to see what happens. It's got to be a stressful time for those kids. I mean, it's already a stressful time for that age group going into the draft. And then <laughs> to have this going on and not knowing if there is going to be a draft has got to be kind of surreal. At least they don't get to mess out on like the fitness testing. That's a bonus. <laughs> <laughs> you always think of the positive stay, Frank. Yeah, I'm kind of the half, half uh, or whatever that is, the glass half full. Glass half full. Yeah. <laughs> Let's talk about you three. I was, you know, when I was planning this, um, I was watching you guys all from afar, obviously, through uh, social media. You're all wearing the Cs. You're all having great years. I mean, two of you, uh, Bryce, you were, what, 12th in scoring at the time. Zane, you were top five. You are number four. Um, not a big what, deal. What? Uh, not a big deal. Not a big deal. <laughs> what, uh, what is it about the Lloyd area that uh, – you know, like you guys are having some real success, um, whether it was night in, night out, but then also in the, the leadership category, putting a, a letter on your on your jerseys, uh, respectively. That doesn't happen uh, very often. And I mean, to have three kids out of the same area, I thought was pretty cool. Yeah, uh, I think we're just around the right people all the time. Obviously, this age group, the 2099s, we've all played together and been around everybody's parents all the time that I think maybe everybody was just raised the same way and raised the right way that kind of thing and just just around the the right groups of people that I think that that kind of helps you get where you need to go that is that, yeah that's really true you know you you go to the rink or you work out with each other every day in the summer you know you, you pick up tendencies and you know I know these guys learned a lot from me the last you know <laughs> couple of summers <laughs> Yeah. Uh, that's, it's, it's probably the other way around but yeah it was really fun you know the last couple summers and um you know hopefully we get to do a little bit of that this this summer yeah i think it's it's always fun kind of like you said there's a good group of good group of lloyd boys out there and whether it's whether it's in the dub or whether it's college or junior there's a lot of a lot of good hockey players in this area and it's fun that we all get the chance to skate together this summer and kind of push each other and and hang out off the rink too and get to know each other it's it's lots of fun well here's me wishing you boys all the longest possible hockey careers ever but uh i always think when i see all you guys having such good success somewhere the border kings are licking their chops hoping you all come back at some point and restart that team and win a national champion that way uh, I think I'm going to start well, back the, the Marwin Comets, though. I think I'm going to do that. <laughs> my dad well, played the Kings. Might have to do that someday, so we'll see. I, hopefully I'm not playing then, fellas, because if uh, WHL superstars come <laughs> back, I'm, uh, I'm going to have a rude awakening. <laughs> um, what is next for you guys? I know – I think we should probably start with, with uh, Mr. Anaheim Mighty Ducks himself or I guess not mighty, Anaheim Ducks himself. Um, what was that like uh, for you, Bryce? I know just signing, like, that's got to be a dream come true. There's now lots of work to to go go ahead with it. But uh, maybe talk a little bit about that, because, I mean, that is what's next for you coming up here as soon as the borders get cleared, I assume, and everything else. Yeah, obviously that's something uh, I've dreamed about when I started playing hockey and I've worked for. So it was a, a really exciting time there. Uh, it was kind of a surprise. It was um, we just played a big game against Portland to, for first place, and we won that game. And my GM called me back to to his office, and there was an Anaheim scout there that I went out to dinner with earlier on in the year. So 
I just thought he was coming to the chat after the game. And then he told me uh, my agent accepted a deal that they offered. So I just kind of went, holy shit, and kind of just drew a blank <laughs> there for a little bit. And my team told my teammates, and everybody was excited. And then, uh, yeah. Drinks once, on Bryce. What? Drinks on Bryce. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, once it got released there, it, it kind of settled in. And, yeah, it's just a huge honor, and I'm thankful that it, it happened to me. Um, obviously, for guys like Zayner and some other 20-year-olds, the season ending kind of doesn't help the cause there for, for overagers for the big playoff push. So I was lucky in that department. And, yeah, there's so many people to thank. And, uh, yeah. Well, you uh, – I don't, I don't know the logistics, but is there – uh, with the, it being the States, it's not like you can just go over to if it was Edmonton or Winnipeg or Vancouver or whatever. Um, I assume you're in contact. When, it, when are you supposed to head that way? Is it something that doesn't happen until later on in the year? Is there even an idea at this point? Um, yeah, right now, like, I still have no idea because if the AHL starts back up, I could be heading there and being a part of their playoff, playoff run. But we still don't know if that's going on. And then same thing with development camps and and main camp there, the, the dates are still kind of unanswered. So I'm just trying to stay in shape as much as possible and, and see when that works out. Cool. Zayner, how about you? Like, yeah, with the, you know, things coming to an end the way they do, which, uh, I mean, we've discussed a lot here, just sucks. It's not exactly ideal. What, uh, what's next on, on the docket for you? Uh, it's very undecided or, you know, up in the air a little bit. Um, there's definitely some options, you know, there's school and then, you know, there's pro, like some pro, but I would love to get like a, an A deal of some sorts, um, you know, fingers crossed for that to happen. But, you know, if that's, you know, doesn't, doesn't work out, you know, um, that's make use of like the, the schooling program that the dub, you know, provides to you and, you know, go somewhere sweet and play some good hockey there. Yeah. Well, and CIS is exceptional hockey, right? Different style compared to, uh, what you guys are playing currently mainly in schedule, right? Like, I mean, you got school on top of hockey and the hockey is a shortened schedule, but that'd be uh, by no means a step down in any uh, stretch of the imagination. There's a lot of good hockey players that go play CIS for four years and then carry on to have exceptional careers. So, Hey man, all the best here. Cause that, that um, I enjoy watching now that I've got to meet all you guys, it's fun to watch where you go and, and how the success has been for all you guys. Um, with Chase, I assume it's back to, to Blade City. Yeah, I'll, I'll go back there for my 20-year-old season and kind of hope to have as much success as these two did as 20-year-olds. And, I mean, ultimately try to sign a pro contract next year. And, yeah, that's kind of a goal right now. And just kind of work towards that. Hopefully get a camp invite this summer. But, We'll, we'll see what happens here coming up, if there will be camps or whatnot. But, yeah, next year I'll be uh, heading back to Saskatoon for my last year. Cool. Well, let's have a little bit of fun here, boys. Uh, I always end off the segments with the Crude Master Final Five. Five questions, nice and simple, or as deep as you want to go. What's the thing you've been binging on since being locked up? Tiger King. Yeah, I watched Tiger King, too. <laughs> <laughs> What did you uh, think of I Tiger King? I couldn't get through Tiger King. It's, uh, I love it. Yeah, Crazy. I couldn't get through it. It was nuts. It's, it's not, it's, yeah, it's not. It's too it wasn't, it wasn't like it was good. I didn't think it was, like, good, but, like, you just had to keep watching because it just got, yeah. like, crazy every time. I don't know how you couldn't sit down and just, just watch yeah. how crazy it all is. Yeah. But. I, I, uh, the one, one show I'm into uh, is uh, Curb Your Enthusiasm. On Crave. That's pretty good stuff. Never heard of that. Never heard of Curb Your Enthusiasm? No. I was, no. was going to say that is a, a very mature pick there, Zayner. Nice Cur Curb Your Enthusiasm is wow, fantastic. I'm telling you. <laughs> who's who's, uh, the, so who's the main I'm guy in Curb Your Enthusiasm? Who's the main guy in Curb Your Enthusiasm, Zane? Uh, Larry David. Yeah, who did Seinfeld. Yeah, that's right. Uh -oh. Yeah. I still don't know. <laughs> you guys should watch it, actually. That's pretty good stuff. I don't know it's why. Good stuff. It's pretty good stuff. I have Crave. Is Crave yeah. free right now? I heard that. Maybe, I might be wrong. No. I don't, no. I don't know. I'm, I'm not Spreading sure. I don't pay the bill here, so, <laughs> so I don't know. That's what I heard. I don't know. It's free for me. It's free for me. <laughs> I don't know. 
<laughs> I thought I threw out Seinfeld thinking you guys would know that, but you're all too bloody young anyways to know. <laughs> you probably have never watched enough Seinfeld anyways, right? Any of you watch Seinfeld? I've, I've probably seen one. I've probably seen it when my parents were watching it. Yeah, walking, up, walking up to grab a snack or something. <laughs> you guys have no idea what, what you're missing. It's a show about nothing. It's fantastic. <laughs> no? It's the best show about nothing. That's right. <laughs> Frank, he's a Seinfeld guy. Uh, he's more of a Not guy. really. But I, but I definitely, yeah. Yeah, I definitely know. Like, I know some show, Like, I've watched a couple, but I haven't you know, watch it all. Yeah. I will say this. The wife and I did sit down and watch Tiger King. The first probably three episodes of it make your eyebrows, you just are like, what yeah. is going on? Oh, uh, it kind of ends abruptly. Well, at least I thought it did. All of a sudden he just disappears and then he gets surrounded by cops and oops, spoiler <laughs> alert. But uh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's a pretty messed um, up show. I guess we should ask though, do you guys think that uh, Carol killed her husband? Hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. Everything kind of points yeah. towards it, but yeah. I actually fed them to the tigers, like they said. <laughs> yeah, I could see it for sure. Finish the sentence. When was when restrictions get lifted, the first thing I'm gonna do is uh, <laughs> uh, go hey, to OJ <laughs> for sure for happy hour. <laughs> see the boys. Yeah. See yeah, the boys. boys. <laughs> So you're all meeting at OJ's? Is that the answer? <laughs> I yeah, guess so. I think so. He's calling the shots. Wherever Frankie wants to. <laughs> Wherever Bryce goes, he's got all the, the money. <laughs> <laughs> Sportsnet's had a big kick right now, or I guess all the sports stations have, of um, replaying old hockey series, baseball, basketball, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. If you could have one game come back on um, any sport, any series. What one would you want to watch? One game. One, uh, one, one game, game or one series. One of the games actually came on that I watched was pretty cool. It was, the, it was Russia and Canada in the gold medal of the world junior one year. It was like the, the year Crosby was like an underage or whatever. He was wearing a cage. It was the year – Bergeron was led the tournament scoring. That was a pretty cool game to watch. I actually sat down and watched it surprisingly. But yeah, that was cool. And then watching the Raptors kind of win again, that was cool. Big Raptors guy, eh? no, <laughs> it's cool Hey, you been working on your basketball skills, Bryce, or what? Yeah, I still got that in my driveway. <laughs> uh, for me, I think I would. Um, have to watch like Michael Jordan, like any you know, any one of his uh finals, you know, series. Um, you know, he's like one of the best, and he's like been all over the you know, news right now or whatever because he's his big final series or whatever. His they're doing a documentary on him is coming out, so that'd be fun to watch him or you know, get to watch him play live. Comes out on Netflix yeah. tomorrow, I think. Yeah, yeah, it's supposed it's to be on real and shows or something, yeah. Yeah. Um, hmm. I'd probably want to watch the, when Kobe and Shaq were a duo with the, with the Lakers there. <laughs> that'd, be, that'd be pretty exciting to watch. Okay, this is a big if. So a big what if game here, okay? If the NHL playoffs could fire up in a couple months and you were the guy picking the format they're going to play and your choices are March Madness, so Single game, winner take all, and you move on. World junior format, so you play in pools and then move on to single game elimination playoff rounds or uh, something in variation of the baseball playoffs where you have a wild card to get in so more teams can compete and then best of three, best of five, five, seven, or how I, those are your three choices, all right? I think I would go – the baseball format, you know, yeah. the series would be, you know, five games or whatever. It's, yeah, probably it'd probably end up being five games. Um, but I think it, you know, it'd still be intense and, you know, it still has like the the normal playoff feeling, but it's, it'd just be shortened. And I think that's probably the best way for them to do it. <clears throat> Maybe uh, I should run the league. That's what I'll do after this. I'll run the league. That's what you should do. <laughs> 
I think I think that would be cool too. I think the the bass the March Madness would be cool too. But then again, yeah. it's, it's kind of one it's a one game knockout, which isn't. I don't know if that's like. I think for fans, March Madness would be like kind of exciting yeah. to watch. But for the players, it'd probably if you have one bad game and then you're out. But for the fans, it'd be pretty exciting. Yeah. Let's put it this way: if if the WHL called you boys tomorrow, said, "Hey, listen, we're gonna have playoffs. The only hitch is." One game, winner moves on. Now who's winning it out of you three? Everett. I think we still are. <laughs> <laughs> As a player, would you go back and play in something like that? If they gave you two weeks yeah. to – listen, yeah. we're going we're gonna to give you some practices. And then first game, I think, you know, when I look back at the standings, I want to say Saskatoon's playing, what, Edmonton first round? Yeah. Sweet for Edmonton. <laughs> Beat them twice this year, Frankie. <laughs> Everett, Spokane, and Kamloops would play. Kelowna. I think you'd play Kelowna. Yeah. Yeah. I I still think just because they would have to play Portland, we would end up. I just still don't understand your logic. Yeah, or you have to, or you have to play Spokane. Yeah, they're, they're, Portland. Spokane is yeah, but I'm just their U.S. division is way harder than my division. Oh well, yeah. So I'm just saying, like, the chances of you not winning is higher. I don't agree. <laughs> that's just common sense. Like, that's just the logic. Like, we all, we're just, just, uh, we're just weird. You guys, have watched, you guys have watched too much Tiger King, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> if a well, sport – <laughs> no, go. What are you trying to say? So you're trying to say the BC is easier? No, so just... I'm just – yeah. Well, kind of. Well, a little bit, actually. I'm just saying, like, I agree. I Kelowna, Kelowna, is, Kelowna is not, you know, Portland. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Is probably the probability of, we would have of a harder, winning. We would have a harder time getting to the finals. Yeah, exactly. And that's all I'm saying. <laughs> I strongly disagree. Strongly, I strongly disagree. That's whatever, though. It's good. It's good. It's awesome. Your final question. <laughs> what will be the first sport to come back with no fans so they can play? Golf, yeah. I think. Is, is that <laughs> considered to be? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. That's a major that's... sport. Absolutely. I actually uh, can't figure out why they don't do golf right now. Yeah, yeah. that's what I was thinking, but I don't yeah. know. <laughs> Out of the four, okay, like let's pick out the four big North American sports. Okay, there, so you got you baseball, know. hockey, football, and basketball. basketball. It'd be basketball, I think. Uh, basketball means the most. Be basketball hockey. means the most. Yeah. I know, I know. I think basketball means more to North America than hockey does. So I think if, there, if, if football was possible, I think it would be that, but their season's done already. I don't know. Actually, football's a big market. I don't know. <laughs> Oh, I, no I, really, I really feel like I have it all figured out. I honestly yeah. think I could run. <laughs> you should send an I, email I, in or something. <laughs> I could run, you know, the sports. <laughs> you should run the whole – you should take <laughs> over for the virus and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'll find a cure for you soon, I bet. Yeah, exactly. Don't play past me. <laughs> How weird would it be, boys, if you got invited back to the WHL? They said, well, we're going to play out the playoffs. Or you're gonna have no fans at any anywhere. That would be yeah. nothing new for Saskatoon. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. You're kidding me. We were gonna play. We were <laughs> gonna play our last home game in front of no fans already. So I was. I don't know. It'd be. I feel like you would just be able to hear, hear like everything. I think it'd just be weird. You, you, you wouldn't get away with anything like yeah. you know. You miss a pass or something. You're like. Fuck, you give me a better <laughs> pass. The coach would be the coach would hear it right the away. The broadcasters I mean, or whatever would just hear yeah. you guys just chirping each other and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, you'd hear everything. <laughs> Did you end up playing Bryce then with no fans, or they were just about no. to do that? That would have it would have it would have been for our final home game, and we had four road games before that, so we never got to. Hmm. That that would be. I mean. You boys ever get to senior hockey, you'll figure that out pretty quick. That that happens every once in a while or for 
every game in the regular season. But it'd be it, like you're playing like bantam hockey again. Like, that, that's you know, right. Whatever. But in They're a giant building, it'd be in a yeah. giant uh, building. It'd be awful, wouldn't it? Wonder if they do like all the light shows and stuff. I don't know. Maybe they have to go play like it's just like in a minor hockey rink. <laughs> Good so it's like more fast pace. <laughs> well, boys, thanks for hopping on and having a little bit of fun. Uh, hopefully everybody's staying safe and you guys are figuring a way. I, I feel like when, when uh, beers are happening at OJ's, there might be a little bit of wrestling going on after a few of the last comments going on. Yeah. <laughs> and wrestled, me and Zayn have wrestled a couple times. Yeah. Yeah. Me and Bryce are known to wrestle. That's for sure. <laughs> Well, appreciate you guys hopping on and uh, having a little bit of fun. Best of uh, best of luck here in the uh, you know coming months and yeah, yeah. as you move along and seeing where you guys go. Appreciate you uh, you hopping on again. Yeah, thanks yeah, for having us. Thanks for having. Me. Yeah, thanks a lot. Thank you. Hey, folks! Thanks again for joining us today. If you just stumble on the show and like what you hear, please click subscribe. Remember, every Monday and Wednesday, a new guest will be sitting down to share their story. The Sean Newman Podcast is available for free on Apple, Spotify, YouTube, and wherever else you find your podcast fix. Until next time.